And we're going live. Hi, everyone. We're now being joined by our participants for this Languages of Appreciation webinar. We're so glad that you're joining us this afternoon. And we're at a full capacity right now. So we already have 100 people in our Zoom room. Uh, just to note, next month, we are definitely increasing our capacity as we are seeing that the demand is growing higher. But if right now you are unable to enter the room, we're live on Facebook. You can tell your friends to watch us on our Facebook page, Positive Workplaces PH. So just search Positive Workplaces PH on Facebook and you will be able to watch us and share that content with others as well. So welcome everyone. While you're, well, before we start, we have a Menti question there. So if you go to menti.com and use the code 2706218, you can answer this question that we have, which is how appreciated do you feel at work? So please answer that question. How appreciated do you feel at work? Uh, our team member Rose has also put the link in the chat box. So know, know that on Mentimeter, nobody will ever be able to trace your responses back to you. So it's very safe that you can answer your honest response of how appreciated do you feel at work. So we're waiting for more responses. All right. We'll go back to your responses on that later. For now, I'm going to be introducing to you our webinar hosts for today. We have Ross Fortunado and also our team member, Chi Schallenberg, who will be facilitating today. So I'll be introducing them to you. Oh, so before that, just some reminders. Have another device or be ready to go to another link. And everyone will be on mute initially, but we really love to hear your engagement. So put your questions and your comments in the chat box. I will be monitoring the chat box. I'm Nikki. I'm the co-founder of Positive Workplaces. I'll be looking at the chat box and later I'll be moderating the Q&A with Ross and Chi. So also you will get certificates upon answering your post-evaluation. Please write your full name and know that the form only accepts one, e uh, one response per email address. So um, just note that if you want, if more that more people will be will be using the more want more certificates, just make sure you use another email for that. So and now I'm gonna introduce you to. Uh, oh yeah, so here's how you open the chat box. You just click that chat function. If you want it to be private, you can send it privately to me the question. Or if you're happy for other people to see it, you can just send it to everyone. This is also a norm. You can raise your hand if you'd rather speak and we can unmute you later on. So good afternoon, everyone. Today we are with Ross. She's a consultant for people development and well-being services. And she's finished her master's in counseling from Ateneo de Manila University. Ross is actually a well-being, um, she's a well-being advocate and people development professional. She finished a BA psychology in UP de Leman with a cum laude. And she was a former human development manager of Teach for the Philippines with over 10 years of experience as a formator, as a mentor, as a trainer, and people program manager across social development, education, and corporate settings. On the other hand, she, she studied with BA psychology and graduate cum laude from UP de Leman. She's held several leadership positions in her organizations that includes the UP Psychology Society, ISEC, and UP Bike Share. She's currently a learning and development associate of Positive Workplaces, where she designed some of the highest rated webinars and trainings on leadership and positive psychology. So some of the participants in these webinars include leaders from government units like NEDA, GSIS, and DSWD. And she's also designed trainings for managers from top organizations like Globe Telecom. So welcome. Uh, we welcome Ross and Chi today who will be sharing what it means to have, what it means to appreciate people in the workplace. So now I turn it over to you, Chi. Okay, so hello everyone. So as Nikki mentioned, I'm Chi. I'm a learning and development associate here in Positive Workplaces. And I'm so excited to teach you today about strengthening teams through appreciation. So we're basing this on 
The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace by Gary Chapman and Paul White. <clears throat> so there are people who might think that appreciation is unnecessary since we get paid anyway, our employees get paid. But our goal for today is to show you why appreciation is important and how it can benefit the work we do. So especially in the pandemic now, it's becoming more important for us to show that we value the people we work with. So our learning roadmap for today, I'll be discussing why showing appreciation is important in the workplace and what are the different appreciation languages. And then Ross will guide you on how we can apply appreciation languages in our workplaces. So let's begin with why is showing appreciation important in the workplace? So I'd like you to go back to Menti. Go to menti.com and you can use that code. And Rose, our intern, is also putting a link there below. Um, so the question is, think of a time that you felt appreciated at work and how did this impact you at work or how did it impact your work? So a little reflection here. Let's see if we can already see how it benefits us just through this question. So yeah, you can click the link. I felt good, I wanted to do more. It inspired me and made me want to contribute more to the company. It empowered and motivated me to extend an extra mile. So motivation is a very common theme here and inspiration. It made me feel more motivated to do my tasks regardless of how taxing they were. Yes, so I'll wait a bit for more answers. So yes, everyone's really saying how much more it motivates them. So that's actually a really big benefit of appreciation in the workplace. So what can you, what do you have to say, Ross, about these responses? Right, I was actually thinking about it for myself too, Chi. Like for me, so definitely it makes me feel more appreciated at work. And at the same time, it makes me feel like I belong um, whenever like someone appreciates what I do. So it, it makes me feel like I belong and then that that what I'm doing has an impact for the org. So those are the things. How about for you, Chi? How, how is that for you? I think same with me, like even when I'm so tired already, like I like doing the work, but then sometimes you're really going to get tired, <laughs> right. especially if it's already That's late. True. But then when some one co-worker says, oh, I really appreciate all you're doing. It really gives me more motivation to continue what I'm doing. So yeah. yeah, a lot of people have also been saying that. That's really motivation, uplifting, inspiring. Yeah, so, I yes. saw someone, some people put um, very specific items. So like someone said, being tapped on the shoulder. Ooh, we're going to go into that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we just wanted you to think about it for your own experience, from your own experiences, how you think appreciation benefits you. So according to Chapman and White, there are three common reasons why we want to feel appreciated. So we want to be appreciated because first of all, each of us want to know that what we're doing matters. We want to know that there's a point to all the work we're doing and we want to feel recognized. And one way of doing that is feeling recognized for it or appreciated by it, from it. And next, we don't want to feel like machines or commodity in our company. So we're all individuals, we're all human beings. And if we don't, if we don't feel like that, we might start getting discouraged or you might start thinking negatively of our work. We might be complaining more. And lastly, so this is something common Ren, in our mentee, we want to be appreciated because if no one notices the good job that we're doing, our motivation may lessen over time. And in the Philippines, um, in the Philippines, motivation is much is important in our workplaces because we're more collectivist. So a lot of studies have shown how we're more collectivist compared to our Western counterparts. So we're more other oriented. We focus more on work with collaboration. We care more about our relationships with our coworkers. And in a study by Ilagan and his co-researchers, he actually mentions how one motivator of Filipinos in the workplace is our organization related needs. So we value, we're motivated by our sense of responsibility to the, to the company, a sense of belongingness, our loyalty to the company, and of course, our relationships with our coworkers. So yeah. we value the quality of relationships with them. So it, this includes, now we feel that they're concerned for us or they appreciate us. And this can affect our engagement in the organization. 
she just like what Mary Jane Detox said in the chat box. So whenever she feels appreciated, she says that they consider me as a partner rather than an employee. So I think it um, stitches into that what you were saying earlier that they they value relationships. So feeling like you're a partner or part of um, the organization rather than just an employee. Yes, you belong in the organization. And also in another study by Yao, to Filipino workers, intangible rewards way more than tangible rewards in terms of motivation. So we're motivated more by intrinsic factors like our sense of accomplishment, achievement. But we don't want you to think that because intangible rewards way more, then maybe we don't need to pay our employees as much. So that's not what we're trying to say. Because there's also a popular theory called the hygiene motivation theory, which says that there are two factors to job satisfaction. And to understand them better, I want you to think of this example. So imagine that you're a car and your destination is job satisfaction. So your car would need gas to move to its destination. And the gas in this theory are the motivation factors. So these are usually the intrinsic factors that create job satisfaction when they're there. So if, we're appreci if we feel appreciated, then we have gas to keep going forward. And another but then, gas won't be enough if there are roadblocks to job satisfaction. And the hygiene factors are important here because they, of, they keep away the roadblocks. Without the hygiene factors, roadblocks would appear. So these are the more of the external factors that cause dissatisfaction when they're taken away. So like salary, um, the policies in your company, supervision. So if those are taken away, even though if they don't always lead to more better performance, better motivation. If they're taken away, it will cause dissatisfaction. So that's why appreciation also can't stand alone. It has to go hand in hand with these tangible rewards. And also, some of you might be thinking, oh, we already say thank you in our company. We have recognition programs. So my colleagues should be motivated already. But there's actually a difference between recognition and appreciation. So both of them focus on what is good for the company, but recognition does this by focusing more on performance. So it's solely about behavior. Um, this team is doing what we want, they're doing it well, so we're gonna recognize them. So that's what recognition focuses on. Well, on, on the other hand, appreciation doesn't focuses on the company and it also focuses on the employee's value as a person. So it can go beyond just performance. You can appreciate someone for little things. You can appreciate them for their personality. So it's all more for the person rather than what it does for the company. And also recognition, the relational direction is mostly down. So you usually are recognized by your bosses, by your supervisors. You usually recognize the, your teammates who work with you. Well, on the other hand, appreciation, it can be communicated in any direction. So you can show appreciation to your boss, your boss can show appreciation to you, you can show appreciation to your colleagues and vice versa. So it can go anywhere. And there are three ingredients for effective appreciation. So first, it must be personal. So it should be specific to the person that you're showing appreciation to. So for example, if your boss sends you a long message complimenting you, um, saying you did such a good job today, you get flattered. But then when you find out, oh, he copy pasted that and sent it to everyone else in the team, it might not have the same impact as if it was personal and specific to you. And second, it should be relevant. So the way you show appreciation, it must be meaningful to the person. So we're going to be discussing this more in depth later with the languages of appreciation, because that will really come in handy with how people want to be shown it. And lastly, it should be authentic. So appreciation should be genuine. Um, so you don't show appreciation just because you want their motivation to go higher. You show appreciation because you actually mean it. So it isn't something that should be forced because if it's forced, then there might be negative impact. Like they might think, oh, I don't believe this person because he's just showing, saying this to, out of pity. And in the end, they'll feel bad because it doesn't, real, doesn't feel real. So next, let's go back to menti.com. So now that you know what appreciation really means and how it's different from recognition, 
what is your biggest obstacle to showing appreciation at work? So this will help with the authentic side of appreciation because once you know what's stopping you from me showing authentic appreciation, it's something you can work on. So we put some options, but if ever your obstacle isn't there, you can add it in the chat. So is it because you're busy, there's no time to go out of your way and show appreciation to everyone? Is it because you're not comfortable showing it? Like maybe you feel a bit introverted or is it because of logistical issues because we're work from home now. I don't really see my teammates, so it's harder to show appreciation. Or do you believe that it's not important? Like, what's the point of showing appreciation? They're the, here to do their job. <laughs> so it seems personal discomforts leading right now. I'm curious to know those who answered personal discomfort, um, what that means for them. So if anyone who answered personal discomfort would like to expound in the chat box, that would be nice. I would be interested to know what makes it uncomfortable for us. Yes, <coughs> sorry. Oh, so it's really a tie between busyness and personal discomfort. Okay, oh. It's really so tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Adrian answered because of my personality, ENTJ and MBTI. Oh, okay. So my reference pa ito sa MBTI. So one um, tip for personal discomfort that I can give like from the top of my head is to start small. Like you don't have to go all out with showing appreciation. Just start with what makes you, what's okay with you, what's in your comfort zone. And then slowly it can get better and better. So like um, just saying good job today, that can mean a lot already and it doesn't take that much effort or you can send a private chat so if you're shy to do it in public yes then busyness is also a close second so with busyness i guess it's also important to um learn how to prioritize and i'll explain it more in the next slide so once we learn to overcome our obstacles to personally relevant authentic appreciation we'll begin to see how it doesn't only benefit us and the people we work with, it can benefit the entire company. So according to Chapman and White, personally relevant, authentic appreciation can lead to higher employee engagement. And when there's higher employee engagement, there's lower turnover, lower absenteeism, and higher productivity. Because we're more motivated, we'll want, we're, we'll want to go to work more, we'll be more excited to see the people we work with, we can work more efficiently. So with busyness, it's also good to be able to learn how to prioritize because in the long run, um, these systems of appreciation can do a lot for increasing motivation in the workforce. So even taking a few minutes of your day, like five to 10 minutes to show a few people that you appreciate them and you don't have to do it all in one go, like I need to show appreciation to everyone in the workplace. No, you can learn to prioritize and you can also learn to delegate. Like, you don't have to be the one to show it to everyone. And next, so with that, we'll be going to what are the different appreciation languages. So imagine this situation pre-pandemic. You are the lead organizer of an annual fundraising event for your company's initiatives. And as the day of the event gets closer, you start to experience more stress. It begins to affect your motivation for leading the project because you start to feel less enjoyment from the work. So I'll give you some time to feel like you're in this situation. And take note, this is pre-pandemic. So it's not work from home. So one day, your supervisor approaches you and says one of these. A, I see all the time and effort you're giving you're really helping our company grow. B, how can I help you with the fundraiser? C, would you and your team like to have dinner with me tonight to discuss the project? D, you're almost at the finish line and he gives you a high five. Or E, because of all your hard work, here are tickets to the concert of your favorite band. So now which of these from these statements would make you feel most appreciated and least appreciated? So let's rank it on Menti. Ooh, so Maria Palagia said, because it's pandemic, I generally send food delivery. I give souvenir mementos indicating positive words. Oh, that's very nice. 
it's really nice now to look for alternatives to how to show appreciation, especially if you don't see your coworkers a lot. So it's great that you're making the effort until now. Yeah, so Ms. Pelage actually mentioned that she couldn't relate on the challenges to show appreciation because she as a person, she's very, very um, showy about how she gives appreciation to her co-workers. So that's oh. why she mentioned this example. So we hope you share more with us later, Mom Yes, Pelaga. some tips for everyone. So it seems what's leading now is I see all the time and effort you're giving you're really helping our company grow. So try to remember what your answers are because we'll go more in depth with this later. Because of the lowest seems to be because of all your hard work here, tickets to the concert of your favorite band. So this is actually in line with Chapman and Paul's, Paul White's research, but I won't spoil yet. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so it seems like that's the common theme for everyone. The first is I see all the time and effort you're giving, really helping our company grow. And second is how can I help you with the fundraiser? And it seems four and five keep switching. The high five and here are tickets to the concert of your favorite band. Yeah. Interesting. So those on Facebook, you can also answer on Menti. Okay, so keep this in mind. And now a second situation. So imagine this situation. This time it's during the pandemic and it's one of your coworkers who you're close to who tells you this in an online meeting. So I'll go through each again in case you want to reflect more. A, I really admire all the time and effort you're giving. You're really helping our company grow. B, how can I help you with the fundraiser? C, would you like to have a catch-up session with me tonight? You can tell me about the project. D, you're almost at the finish line and she sends hug emojis because you're work from home. And E, because of all your hard work, here are tickets to the concert of your favorite band. So again, let's go to Menti and rank it again. But this time, take note that this is more work from home and it's a close friend telling you this. <clears throat> so Rose has sent the Menti link again. Okay, I will reload Menti. There. Ooh, so it's almost the same. Oh, there's a change. <laughs> But it's still common that the first is that I admire all the time and effort you're giving really helping our company grow. And second is also still how can I help you with the fundraiser? Oh, surprisingly, the fourth is still higher than the fifth, even though it's work from home. Okay, so the trend is um, sort of similar to the first one. How about you, Ross? Which would make you feel most appreciated? I think I go with the popular vote. It's also the first one for me. How about for you, Chi? For me, I think it's how can I help you with the fundraiser? Okay, okay. Hmm, <laughs> I see now what your language of appreciation is. <laughs> okay, so it seems it's sort of similar. So we'll go back. Okay, so if it wasn't yet obvious, each of the Menti statements correspond to a different language of appreciation. So that was just a short activity to reflect on what your possible appreciation language could be. But there's actually more comprehensive tests on it, which I think will be discussed more later. So everyone has a primary and secondary language. So whatever you were answering one a while ago, whatever you were answering two a while ago, that's most likely your primary and secondary language. So we can accept appreciation in all of the five languages, but we don't feel truly valued unless the message is communicated through our primary language. And also, so you notice there were two mentees and they were different situations. They were the same situation, but different contexts. Because I did that because language can also change depend on, depending on the context. So if you guys are familiar with the love languages, that's also by Chapman. 
So maybe your highest love language is different from your highest language of appreciation because it's coming from a different person. Or also um, because I was actually surprised. I expected physical touch to be lower, <laughs> the lowest during um, during the work from home setting. But it seems na hug emojis is also effective for most people who value physical touch. And also, mm -hmm. lang yeah. It was a fourth earlier, ba? Yeah, it was above. <laughs> it was above tangible gifts, and um, also the lang the context can also change within the language. So, for example, if my language of appreciation is words of affirmation, but then I have stage fright. So, if someone was like um, admiring me, giving me words of affirmation in public, it would end up still being a negative experience for me since I don't like it in public. So it's also important to take note of which context you appreciate the language most. Okay, and aside from our primary and secondary languages, it's also important to know our least valued language because this can end up becoming a potential blind spot. So if you're only doing what comes naturally to you, the language of appreciation you value least may be seldom used with others who value it most. So for example, if my, if acts of service is my least valued. So for example, <laughs> acts of service is my least valued. And then for Ross, it's her most valued. And then if I tell Ross, oh, you're doing such a great job. I really admire everything you're doing. So I'm using words of affirmation because I feel like she'll, she'll feel appreciated with that. But then Ross might think negatively of it and say, she's saying so many things. Why isn't she just helping me with the work? So that may happen, which is why it's important to also be aware of what the least valued language of appreciation is that you have, and maybe the people who you work closely with. So I'll just go through each before handing it over to Ross. So words of affirmation, this is when you use words to communicate a positive message to another person. So this is basically showing encouragement and support through words. So you can do it for praises when you're when someone has an accomplishment, or if someone did something nice, you'll be like, Oh, that was a really kind thing that you did. So it's helpful if it's also very specific. Then there's quality time. So this is showing a person that they are valued by giving a pres precious resource, which is time. So sometimes this might be misunderstood as someone is feeling close. So remove that mindset, because sometimes that's how people feel most appreciated through quality time. It's not feeling close to them. I see, Chi, that you put the statements there. So does it mean that if they chose that statement earlier, there's a chance that this is their yeah. um, love, their language of appreciation? Yes. So thanks for pointing that out. So I put that there so you can also check um, which, and which of your answers corresponded to which language of appreciation. So yes, if you answered, would you and your team like to have dinner with me tonight to discuss the project? Then Maybe your language of appreciation is quality time. Then the next one is acts of service. This is feeling appreciated when others reach out to help. So the key word here is to reach out. So you shouldn't overimpose. You need to respect Rin how they want the task to be done. So it's just not the act of service itself. It's that it's done the way they want it to be done. And next. Tangible gifts. So this was the lowest in the languages of appreciation. And Chapman and White actually also said that this is usually the lowest in workplaces. So these are thoughtful items that show that you are getting to know your coworkers personally and what they enjoy. So it doesn't have to be as expensive as concert tickets. It can be any small gift, regardless of cost, that can make a huge impact because it shows that you thought of the person when you picked it out. And lastly, physical touch. So these are affirming and appropriate touches that can be meaningful expressions of appreciation. So in the workplace, there are a limited number of situations involving this. So it's usually high fives, handshakes, pats on the back, like someone mentioned earlier. Um, and the pandemic made this even trickier. So Chapman and White suggested using emojis or just showing, um, showing that a feeling of warmth, like smiling a lot more, so to some people who answered physical touch, even with um, the work from home setting, it shows that emojis can also make a huge difference. Okay, so with that, I'll pass it on to Ross, who's gonna guide you through how we can apply it in the workplace. So I'll stop sharing screen first.
Thank you, Chief, for that. One moment. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so now we go to um, how we might be able to show the languages of appreciation. So how might we be able to use it? So just a quick check. What do you think is your language of appreciation at work? So based from what she has discussed so far, so you can just type in the chat box what you think your language of appreciation is at work. So for Elor, Elorja, it's words of affirmation. How about for the others? Quality time for Adrian. Words of affirmation for Christine. Okay, so we'll deep dive more about that in a bit. Looks like a lot of people are sharing words of affirmation. Was that the top, top ranking earlier, Chief? Yes, it was. It was. What was the second one? It was um, acts um, of service. Acts of service. And then the third one is um, quality time. Was it yeah, quality, quality time? time? Yeah. Followed by physical touch, the hug emoji, and then the gift. Okay. So we'll. So, um. I remember, so there was this one workshop that I facilitated wherein we talked about providing um, appreciation and feedback at work. And at the end of that workshop, one of the bosses, so he was a division chief, and he approached me to say that, you know, I realized that when you become a boss, um, it's usually you who's all, who is all the time giving the appreciation for other employees. And at the same time, now that I'm here in my position, I don't actually receive any praises anymore or I don't feel like I'm as appreciated as much. So he shared that with me and then eventually shared it with the big group. So after the um, after the workshop, one of the employees, the subordinate of this division chief, actually said in the plenary that, you know, sir, I never knew that you wanted to get appreciation from us because we all know that you're such a great boss, but we never knew that you didn't feel appreciated anymore in this workplace. So, um, and that tells us a little bit of how sometimes, even though we think we're already giving an appreciation for someone in the workplace, it might be that they're not receiving it because they're looking for something else. So that's the beauty of what um, knowing what the languages of appreciation are. So it helps us in two major ways. So here in Positive Workplaces, we mentioned that to be able to build um, positive cultures, we begin with ourselves first, and then we can have a ripple effect to our teams, and eventually it will touch the whole organization. So when we try to speak the languages of appreciation, it's important to first um, have a sense of awareness for ourselves first. So what is, so um, in, using, in using the languages of appreciation, it helps to have a deepened awareness of what makes us feel appreciated and actually proactively seek ways to fill up our tank. So sa mga Pinoy, ano, sa ating pong mga Pinoy, very common sa atin yung hindi tayo nagsasabi, pero naghihintay tayo na mapansin. Um, and this is something that I observed with a lot of my workmates na parang, oy ang dami ko kayang ginawa sa project na yun, hindi man lang ako, ano, hindi man lang na-acknowledge or nag-release na ng, nag na ng shout-out sa email nung isang buwan and then hindi man lang nasama yung team natin, eh, ito yung ginawa natin. And um, which is actually a very, a very valid thing and it's a common experience na minsan mahilig din tayong magtampo ng mga Pinoy. But actually, being able to know what language of appreciation um, is most impactful to us can also help us manage how we are able to seek support um, and sense of belonging in the workplace. So it helps na na-articulate din natin siya. Um, so we'll talk more about it. So we'll deep dive more on how we could be able to proactively seek ways to seek appreciation for ourselves. Too. So medyo weird siyang pakinggan kasi hindi siya, hindi siya common sa atin. But I think you know we can't give what we don't have and um sometimes it's it's it sometimes people just don't know how to appreciate us din kasi katulad nung boss kanina na um na kwento ko na if this division chief did not open that up na apparently he did not appreciate us a boss his employees would would not know na oh our boss pala um 
our boss pala wanted us to be able to to be able to hear from us that we appreciate him so it's a, it was it's, it was a learning moment for both the boss and the employees um at the same time it's helpful to know um in what way but do we usually give appreciation to others because like what she mentioned typically we have uh, primary love languages so we usually speak all of them all of these languages of appreciation we're capable of showing all of them but usually we tend to have a bias on what particular language we like to use for people and it's important for us to know this because the next thing that we need to know is is the kind of appreciation i'm giving the kind of appreciation that matters to this person for whom I'm giving the appreciation to. Um, so in using the languages of appreciation for our teams, so we would like to, so the keyword is optimize. We would like to optimize how our peers and leaders are appreciated um, in, the team that, in the team that we have to be able to build that culture of support and engagement. So for example, kesa gagastos tayo na pagkamahal-mahal na um, mga tokens, for example, that to give to the team, but for the team, pala, what they would like to, what they would like to receive as a language of appreciation would be the loaded na mga tasks, um, so acts of service. Then instead of putting all our efforts and resources in giving them tokens, why not just give them um, the kind of appreciation that matters most for them? So it helps us to be aware. Um, it, it's almost an extension of empathy or social awareness for those of you who have been attending the previous se sessions of positive workplaces. So last session, we had a talk on emotional intelligence. So this is actually part of emotional intelligence, having that social awareness on what are the things, what are the ways of appreciation that other people, um, that matters most to other people in our teams. Okay, and with that, so we'll have a quick exercise. So uh, an exercise on self-awareness. So in what way do you personally receive appreciation at work? So we have five um, we have five slides here. So we'll go through them. I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer. So first one, so what tangible gifts did I receive or like to receive that make me feel appreciated? So we'll go through each one. So just go to Menti. So Chi, I'm curious to know how about for you? So while people are answering, for you, Chi, what is your um, top language of appreciation? How do you receive um, appreciation? I really like when my coworkers offer to help out with tasks. Cause I feel like I feel like because I feel like I'm also quality time. So I feel like acts of service in a way combines both of those like they care about my time also and we're gonna work together so i think that's quality time and acts of service right right hmm. i'll just refresh my menti i think people's answers may not be coming in oh there we go So food, flowers. So we have a lot of food here. I can see a lot of food. Commendation. So probably at least a break from a huge workload. Flowers, incentives. Food and drinks. So a snack. Starbucks tumbler. Okay, a pay raise. So food. So a lot of people are food. So syempre, I think sa ating mga Pinoy, Feeling ko patok na patok na ano natin yan, na language of appreciation ang food, whether at home or in the workplace. So thank you. So a lot of us um like food and GCs for food and coffee. Ayan. Next one. What moments do I consider as quality time with colleagues or or a boss that made me feel truly appreciated? So in what way did you experience quality time at work? Dun sa mga nagsabing quality time. How does that look like at work for you? Coaching conversations. Yeah, me also. Actually, quality time is my top um, language of appreciation. And I can resonate with 
this person who has a who prefers coaching conversation so there's dinner off work after a big project um celebrating life together with food and drink so parang what we can see here is meron tayong integration no? so there's quality time and then there's also um gifts so which which could actually happen naman. so sometimes the way people show us appreciation um traverses through different languages so there's exchange of personal stories pangangamusta recreation activities catch up se session one on one consultations team building so from Miss Amaline Agsao, Agsalon from the chat box, meeting and at the same time lunch or dinner together. So ano siya? Working, working bonding, ganyan. Team outing, team building, simple visit with my supervisor in the office. Uh, so I think a sharing of ideas and humor. So bonding time. So it looks like food is still here so eating together is considered as quality time for most of our attendees and then followed by um very professional uh quality time so coaching conversations one-on-one -on -one consultations and then you have the big group settings with the team buildings etc etc okay let's go to the next one how about in terms of words of affirmation in what ways have i received or like to receive words of affirmation at work so, what are the moments that you appreciate receiving words of affirmation? So, pwede tayo magkwento dito. I think kanina, um, so sometimes just having, just someone saying that you did a good job. So, kanina yung nasabi ni Chi na after the work and then someone said, oh, that was so good. That's a good job. Um, could be a word of affirmation for the others. Short notes or messages. Um, so someone saying, thank you, I'm counting on you. Coaching conversations is still here. So yeah, actually you can, um, words of affirmation is something that you can integrate in your uh, quality time for coaching conversations. So you did a good job. Announcement over PA. So meron pa palang gag. So that would be, that, that nakakamiss ang ano, um, ang non-virtual workplace. So imagine no, in announce over PA ang kanyang ano, ang words of affirmation for this respondent. Encouraging others to support my project. Um, during weekly team meetings, so someone has, other people have rituals. Constructive feedback, um, a simple note of appreciation. Uh, for someone, they said na they appreciate receiving words of affirmation when I'm feeling incompetent. So, nakakatulong yun na na may nagbo-boost ng morale natin just saying something. Okay. So, notes with small gifts. Si Ma'am Bibina gusto, ano, tandem. So, my notes na my small gift pa. Thank you, Ma'am Bibina. So, next one. How do you usually... Um, how about in terms of acts of service? What help with work or acts of service from colleagues do I like to receive at work? Uh, Chi, you to, favorite mo to. So how about for you, Chi? In what way um, do you usually like receiving acts of service? I think they just have to ask. <laughs> I got colleagues so easily. <laughs> when you ask for help and then they... They yeah, give or it sometimes away. they offer without me asking. Okay, so that's a that's a big thing for you when that happens. Yes. Uh, natawa ko dun sa sinabi mo kanina, parang instead of saying it, why not just help me? So <laughs> yan, yan, ang, yan ang rara ng mga ano, um, people who whose primary um, language of appreciation is acts of service. So they'd really rather um, get it done rather than just hear it. So from Christine, so unannounced gestures to help, unexpected. So mas nakakatuwa kapag hindi siya hinihingi. Um, so asking in what way they support me. So as so may nag reach out sa atin. When people teach me things and guide me to help me grow. Sharing of workload, offering help without asking. Asking help or sometimes they just support me by doing my report. Providing concrete support. In the, chat, anything? Sorry. Yes. in the Go chat, ahead. some people are saying that they appreciate when it's unexpected acts of service. Right. Actually, marami nga nagsabi. So, unexpected, unsolicited, 
Yan. Kasi nga tayong mga Pinoy usually hindi tayo masyadong mahilig to ask for things. So, the more na it's unexpected, um, uh, the better. And then, I think one other category that people like is um, being able to extend advice, teach them on how to do things, etc., etc. Helping organize employee engagements. So, there. so there's a lot of... Um, Pass the hat within the organization. Oh, right. So is this parang when someone when someone is going through a difficult situation and then nagpapas the hat tayo for that person? Asking and offering help in times um, most needed. Okay. Cooking for my colleagues, Miss Amalin. Sana colleague mo rin ako para you can also cook for me. Ayan, ang sarap naman ng language of appreciation ni Ma'am Amalin. Okay, so thank you. And um, next one. Oops. How about this one? So actually, this one, physical touch is a little, uh, it may be a little shady when it, it goes beyond boundaries in the workplace. But how about for you? Um, what kind of physical touch am I comfortable receiving at work that makes me feel appreciated? So we have back tap, we have tap on the shoulder, a pat. So we have a lot of pat. So high five, hugs and pat on the back. Okay, having a thumbs up. So from Miss Cherry, fist bumps, si Mom Christine, very baguette style, ano? Um, simple tap and a genuine smile could actually be. Uh, language of appreciation. So some other people would like to have hugs um, for it. And then a pat on the shoulder and a smile. Okay, so that's a little self-awareness exercise on how do you usually, so from all the, from all the, um, from all the questions that we went through, what for you was easy to, the easiest to answer? Or alin dun yung parang, pinakamarami kang naiisip na example of how you were able to receive appreciation at work in the past days. That could also be a clue on what kind of language of appreciation yung top most for you. So just to add to that, so actually, those two things are already, uh, all of those things that you mentioned, so meron tayong hodgepodge of things that we can do. So those are already some suggestions on how we can further um, express or use the languages of appreciation. So right now, we'll just add on to um, the knowledge that everyone already shared. So thank you for your sharing. So and as we go through um, how to strengthen our use of the languages of appreciation. So just think for a moment, within the next week, list down two people that you would like to show appreciation to. Give you 10 seconds for that. So list down two people. Okay, so if you're done, so think about the five languages of appreciation that we just discussed. What do you think is their primary language? So just think. And then as we go through, so try to list down ideas on how you can provide appreciation for these two co-workers or, or maybe for the leaders out there for the so in terms of gifts, I think you, you already gave a lot of examples of how we can use this for people whose, um, for people whose main language of appreciation is to have gifts. It's, it's, it's important that we give them something that's meaningful and relevant to them versus something that's generic. So for example, um, na mention ng marami kanina na food, and dami doon no, for gifts. So mukhang kapag Pinoy talaga, kapag nagbigay ka ng pagkain, Usually, hindi ka magmimintis because most of us really love food. But it's also important to know what kind of food this person would like to receive. So like for me, um, some of, so ako actually, least ko sa love languages and gifts because I don't like eating a lot of things. So I like being minimalist about things. So um, hindi ako mahilig sa mga trinkets or yung mga pasalubong when people go abroad. So uh, hindi ko siya actually masyadong gusto. But there are gifts that were given to me that are personalized, which I really appreciate. So like this one who was um, given to me by uh, 
public school teachers with whom I conducted um, a training with. So I really love this one. And then last time, so I was able to receive uh, a package of sanitizers. For, so from one of my work, na nakalagay dun yung pangalan ko. So medyo um, pasosyal siya, ganyan na. And so that's, um, that's the suggestion of the love languages. When we get gifts, it's something that has to be relevant and meaningful for them rather than yung mga generic lang. Kasi most likely, people wouldn't appreciate um, that as much. So anyone else who would like to add mga gifts? So from Mary Jane, teacher to, the, to a spa. So mga coupons is something that we can give for these people. Ayan. Next one is for quality time. So, ang daming nagsabi doon. Ano yung mga na-mention kanina? So, you have coaching conversations, you have one-on-one -on -one consultations, and then team building. So, on top of that, so it's important. So, one of the things that make employees feel appreciated at work is whenever we provide regular time for them. So, air time for them to be able to express our support for their well-being and professional goals. So actually, according to research, quality time is one of the most potent uh, languages of appreciation. Kasi kadalasan, if it's not the top for people, it's usually the secondary. So hindi tayo din magmimintis for quality time. If this is something that we would invest in for our employees, it's something that, they would, that would really matter for them. So part of providing quality time is practicing empathy and active listening whenever we are with them, one-on-one um, -on -one check ins meetings devoting time for kamustahan like when we start our team meetings so pwede tayong uh, magkamustahan muna on how we are one of the things that you can do for kamustahan for example if you're doing a zoom um meeting before the start of anything you can just say okay so from fist to five um how do we feel right now and then parang they would just show whom sige we can try that now um you can turn on your videos para doon sa, sa mga naka, naka zoom natin, ay sa mga kasama natin dito sa zoom. Ayan. So from fist to five, so kamustahan tayo. Five yung I'm super okay right now. Fist yung I'm super not okay. So and then pwede niyong bilangin kung saan lang. So bibili ako ng, um, I'll count to three and then when I say go, you just show us how you are right now. So from fist to five, how are you? So three, two, one, and go. So how are you right now? I can see a lot of five. So maraming five sa atin. And four from our participants. Oh, maraming five. Meron mga three. But it looks like most of the people who show their videos are a five. So thank you. You can now turn off your videos. If you're com if you're if that's your what you're more comfortable with, um, so that's like a quick check in for a group, for example, just for them to express how they are. Depende na sa atin kung gusto pa ba natin uh, mag deep dive into that how they are. So a lot of um, kamustahan question ideas. So other things um, would be devoting time for virtual R and R or just spending time with people na uh, not related to work or their deliverables because our goal when we whenever we provide quality time is to make people feel that they are valued not just as employees but also as people and that they are appreciated as such so ito yung example na merong virtual game night so let's see can you tell us a little bit about this game that you had Chi? Oh, so we sometimes have chicka hands in positive workplaces we actually have one this saturday for our team so for chika this hands. one me and Chloe, um, she was the one who co fasted during self-compassion. We made a game, like, we just give a description of anything, like, what would you bring? Uh, bring me something na you'd bring if there was a fire in your house. So everyone just shows what they'd want to bring with them out of the house. So it was very yeah. fun. Like, you get to know what people value, um, what makes them laugh. And it was fun. We were laughing a lot. Right, right. Okay, so that's um one idea. Would if if anyone would like to add any other ideas in showing quality time, so you can just type it in the chat box. So these are some of the things that we can do to invest in quality time. So usually, when people's um top 
language of appreciation is quality time. Sobrang no-no for them when it seems like when you're spending time with them, you seem distracted. So having a distracting presence, um, lagi tayo nag-check ng phone habang kausap sila. Or for other people, for example, quality time din yung love language nila at home. And it's important for them to spend quality time with loved ones. Whenever we encroach their personal quality time by setting meetings na, um, na, na nasasagasaan yung quality time nila with loved ones, we can be, um, baka nagiging minus points yon for people whose language of appreciation is quality time. So one thing that for in today's um, virtual setup, one of the ways by which we can be able to do active listening and quality presence in video conversations would be, um, sabi nila, when you're having a very deep and intense conversation, whether like if it's a performance meeting or a coaching conversation, it's helpful daw na, um, aside from framing yourself in such a way that the, the person can see most of your actions and they can see your eye contact, etc., etc. Helpful din na ito turn off natin yung video feedback natin para nakafocus tayo on the person who's on the screen and um, lessen the distraction and be able to really give them our focus time and attention. So next up is words of affirmation. So between the two, um, so marami nang sabi kanina when they get a good job, tap on the back or a note. So one of the things that's helpful for us is praise, of course. So in terms of praise, which of the following, kung halimbawa kayo yung makakarinig nito, which would you like to hear more? So letter A, you did a great job earlier. Or letter B, your proposal earlier was well-researched and compelling. It helped secure the approval of the senior leadership team. Well done. So if you were going to receive a word of affirmation, which one? will you prefer to receive? So type in the chat box. So, Muntilaja is with me. Ikaw, Chi, anong gusto mong ma-receive dyan? B for me. <laughs> B, okay. So we have some A. Okay. But a lot of people, so there are more people who prefer the B. I wonder why. So can someone share bakit preferred nila, mas prefer nila yung B? For you, Chi, why do you prefer B? I feel like, oh, similar to those in the chat, I feel like it's more specific. Like, I know what I did a good job in. So yeah, I'd appreciate yeah. that more. Right, Just like yeah. positive feedback therein. Okay. So in what way does this help you when you receive this kind of affirmation? Like, <clears throat> I know, I know the next time I work, I know what kind of quality they like. I know what, how to make my proposals. Right. And it just affirms me. Right. Okay. So, correct. So, usually when we're trying to use words of affirmation, hindi lang siya basta-basta. Um, so, pwede natin i-extra mile pa yung good job. And we can be more specific about the kind of appreciation that, uh, the kind of words that we use. So, um, so from Adrian, it's realistic daw. So, one method that we can use, so borrowing from DBI, so is the star uh, feedback. So it helps now whenever we're trying to provide feedback or an appreciation, it helps to follow this one. So mention the situation. Um, so earlier in the meeting, you, you in your presentation, mention the task. What was the action that the person did and what was the result? So diba sabi kanina parang earlier in the meeting, your presentation was comprehensive and clear. That's why um, it got approved by the management team. So nandun lahat yun. An, saan nangyari yung ginawa niya, ano yung ginawa niya, ano yung naging action, tapos ano yung naging resulta ng ginawa niya. So that's a very complete way to be able to provide feedback. So provide a star feedback. Um, so aside from praising accomplishments, some of the things that we could also praise is their character or quality. So for example, like with, um, I had the boss before who's very organized and he makes things so efficient. So we can also praise the quality. Parang, you know what, sir? You're such a um, you're such an organized person, and I really appreciate that because it makes uh, our workload so much more smoother. So you can also praise for um, quality. So we'll have a quick exercise right now. So so how about try to compose? So I'll give you a minute to do this. Think of someone whom you would like to provide 
a specific star feedback for or you would like to give an affirmation for. So 30 seconds on the clock. So try to compose a star feedback for someone on your phone, in your messenger. And then I challenge you to send that um, either now or later after this session. So 30 seconds on the clock. Hey, what was your favorite words of affirmation in the past week? In the past week, I actually get awkward when I see words of <laughs> affirmation. I don't know how to react sometimes. So I actually like it more when it's done online because I actually get super flattered in, but then I don't know how to respond when it's in person. Right, right. Um, so yeah, so, so one challenge <laughs> in making it less awkward would, would actually be but for me, what helps me there, because I also get that sense sometimes, is just being gracious about it. And I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just having like a, a gracious response because um, because actually, it's a, it's a great thing to be given words of affirmation. So just being a gracious um, receiver of it. Okay, are you done with your star feedback for people so if you can do it now you can hit send and send that to that person that you would like to appreciate or you can do it later so sometimes so we mentioned earlier that part of knowing the languages of appreciation is also being able to proactively receive it for ourselves so if you think that um quality time is your uh, language of appreciation or words of affirmation you can actually um set uh set you can actually proactively seek time with your bosses um, or seek feedback in such a way na hindi naman siya parang nang fish ka but at the but nang fish ka for compliments but you know you just want to get feedback also if that's something that you're not uh, receiving as well so i just wanted to so before before my story so some of the things that we can do is use notes or cards uh, messages or online notes so we can use padlet or some other online means that we could show appreciation um, it could also be something that we integrate in our team norm so maybe at the start of each team meeting so just acknowledging yung mga contributions ng mga tao it could be like a quick three minute one minute thing three minute thing that you can do in your um, team. So some things to avoid for people whose primary language of appreciation is um, words of affirmation, if you don't give praises at all, or if it's generic and insincere. So if um, if lip service lang yung sasabihin natin, kahit wag na kasi actually nagbo-boomerang yun and it actually becomes more detrimental pa because people would feel naman if we are not sincere with our praise. Or whenever we give unconstructive or public criticism, especially for Pinoy's, na it's a very big value for us yung sense of hiya or shame. So whenever we get um, negative and un unconstructive feedback, tapos naririnig ng maraming tao na magnify yung effect for the employee. So it's okay to give constructive feedback, but uh, what we encourage is to give it in private. So, and then for acts of service, so typically when we give acts of service, um, and this is one of the top things that came out from the poll earlier, no? and I think it's it makes sense because we're all here to work usually in the workplace. And so just some pointers for if, for example, the kind of appreciation we want to give is acts of service. So first and foremost, check your capacity because for people whose language primary language of appreciation is acts of service if you're not able to follow through or you're not able to finish the task that you said you would do for them so that's actually a no-no and has a negative impact on them so before we offer any form of help or service so check your capacity if you're really able to do that um, and then assist in workload where they want to be helped hindi din nakakatulong yung tutulong na lang tayo bigla pero hindi natin tinanong if gusto ba nila yun kasi baka naman um, that's not something that they actually want. So it's better always to ask first. Or it could also be, if not necessarily a direct kind of help, it could be a way of process improvement, that we improve um, the way that our work is structured in such a way that things are lighter. So some of the things that um, Dr. Chapman uh, and Cooley have 
recommended na pwede nating go uh, pwede nating tanungin muna before we provide acts of service is so asking them so what would be helpful for you how would you like the task to be done kasi baka naman sobrang OC sila in the work that they're doing and what would be the best time to help so those could be our guiding questions whenever before we provide uh, help for others and then last but not the least is physical touch which is i think one of the hardest language of appreciation to speak during the pandemic in the time of virtual spaces so in lieu of high fives handshake yung mga nasabi kanina so ngayon ano na tayo limited na tayo to emoji so that's something that you can use um fist bump emoji high five emoji or sometimes um ako ano pa yung mga naiisip or hug emoji uh so if we can use physical touch the thing that we can do is to leverage on the second ranking language of appreciation at the time of the pandemic. For example, so hindi ka nga makapag-bigay um, sa kanya ng physical touch, but you can anchor on uh, the language of giving gifts and you can give them a massage coupon. So that could be one way that you can um, go through this one. Or you can also leverage on quality time na um, you have a one-on-one -on -one check in with them meet up and then dun ka mag send ng iyong mga emojis or whatever ganyan just to make them feel na uh, meron ka pa ring presence sa kanila kahit na hindi siya physical presence at least um, the presence is felt so and of course i think this is common common sense for all of us na as much as possible we need to be aware if we're giving unwanted or inappropriate touch. So, syempre, meron tayong mga rules in the workplace what appropriate touch is. But for some people, if for example, ikaw as a person, talagang language of appreciation mo yung touch na parang gusto mo, uh, binahag mo yung mga tao, gusto mo, binibeso-beso mo sila, or very closey-closey ka sa kanila physically, um, part of the awareness is knowing, ito bang way ko of showing them appreciation? Do they still feel comfortable with this? So, that's a uh, that's a, a point for self-reflection for all of us. Ayan. And with that, so anyone else who would like to, to add? So from Miss Mary Jane, so you did... Oh, okay. So nag naglagay si Miss Mary, si Mary Jane ng kanyang star affirmation. So I hope ma-send mo yan, ma'am, sa iyong employee or colleague that you would want to um, share that affirmation with. So all in all, so we've discussed um, the five love languages and we talked about the different ways by which we can show them. And what the languages underscore is that in optimizing our efforts to show care in our organization and when we're trying to build an engaged team that's rooted in appreciation, um, it's helpful for us to be individualized. So katulad ng sinabi ni Chi, it has to be personal and relevant and genuine so personal relevant and genuine for the person who is receiving it um, so that they they receive it in a way that matters to them and at the same time so aside from doing this one-off na tayo lang as a person binibigay natin siya there could also be ways um, and we encourage people to do this that we can actually build this in our systems na kung hindi kung may mga nagsabi kanina na sometimes it feels awkward na mag-show ng appreciation kasi nga um, baka iba yung feeling ng mga tao. So, katulad ni Chino, awkward siya kapag words of affirmation, ganyan. Um, but, the, but, the, but there is potential in being able to build it already in our team norms, for example, in our weekly meetings, in what way kaya can we integrate appreciation there, um, in our one-on-one -on -one check-ins, in, in how we talk to our employees or setting monthly um, chikahan session katulad sa positive workplaces. So, at least kung nakabuild in na siya sa system natin, hindi na lang siya one person giving it to another, but it's actually the whole organization na, or your whole team um, na nagkakaroon ng space to be able to exercise speaking the languages of appreciation. There. And so for, for your, for something that you can take home, um, this is an appreciation bingo. So our challenge for you, so para wrap up na ang February, which is our love month. So our challenge for you is in the next coming week maybe, so you can take a screenshot of this um, a language of appreciation bingo card. And you can try to cross out at least maybe one per day or one per week 
whatever floats your boat. And what you can see here is, um, meron siyang different, different suggested activities. Some of the activities is showing appreciation for yourself. And then some of the activities is showing appreciation um, for your codies. So katulad ng na-mention ni Nikki for those who attended the first ever session this February on self-compassion. So it's something that, um, so we can't give something that we don't have. So be able, to be able to appreciate others, it's also helpful that we also learn how to appreciate ourselves in small ways. So one of the things there is taking the language of appreciation quiz. So um, we will share in the chat box one one example of a quiz that you can take. So hindi siya yung formal official quiz, pero it's accessible um, for all in Google. So you can just search for that quiz and then take it para you would know ano ba yung sayo, what is your language of appreciation, um, and you can navigate from there. And with that, so, so far we've talked about why appreciation in the workplace is important. We talked about how it's important for engagement and employee motivation. Um, we talked about the five different languages of appreciation. And we talked about how um, it's important for us to be aware of the language of appreciation that we use and other people use so that we could optimize and provide employees the appreciation that matters most to them. So with that, we'll just have like a, just to summarize everything, can, can you share with us um, a key takeaway? So what was your key takeaway from the session that we had? So far, key takeaway from the session? Or something that you would like to practice on your own? So we will have Q&A later. But for now, um, we'd like to know um, what was your key takeaway from the session so far? You can also type in the chat box. So someone mentioned that um, integrated in the workplace. Yes, so having norms, having activities na naka-schedule na makes it easier for people and less awkward also. So appreciation is important and it's also so um mas mura, diba? so instead so of course the salary increase and all those other tangible rewards will always be there but showing appreciation is actually like a very cheap way and it has high impact so why not diba? it just takes a little creativity and more time but yung dulot niya for our employees would be great so be specific in giving feedback so people like the star star feedback appreciation can be strategically utilized to improve the workplace um, leaders should be aware on how to give appreciation to their subordinates. Uh, in like manner, I think, uh, katulad ng kwento ko kanina, subordinates should also um, know na actually their bosses also appreciate being appreciated. So it's important to understand one's language of appreciation. So appreciation can go a long way. And small things can have big impact. And then don't be shy to show your appreciation. Appreciation to your boss, yes. How about for you, Chi, when we were preparing this whole session, was there like a key takeaway you had from this whole topic of like appreciation at work? I think when I was researching about it, what really hit me was like, I should uh, no, be, more in, <clears throat> be more intentional in observing how my coworkers want to be appreciated. Because I think mm -hmm. it comes so naturally for me to just say, Oh, I think she froze a little. Okay, thank you, Chi. So we'll go back to you. Okay, so next one. So in what way would you like to apply whatever you learned here? What What do you want to apply at work? I think na okay. ka kanina, Chi. Sorry, um, I got yeah. cut. <laughs> yeah, so you were mentioning earlier na um, you wanted to be more observant. Yes. Yeah. So that you would know how they would like to be appreciated. Okay, so our next question is, in what way would you like to apply your learning um, from this session at work? So very concretely, what would be one thing that you can do right after this session or uh, within the week after this session? 
So someone answered, so take time to appreciate my coding's contribution, celebrate small wins, and help each other in every way we can. Thank you. Uh, from Miss Mary Jane in the chat box, share my learnings to the leaders. Yeah, you can also share with them actually one thing that you can do. Um, so for me in my previous workplace, we would do this as a we would do this as a team. Now we would take yung love language, pa, love language quiz. Tapos we would share with each other ano yung love language namin and how we would like how we want to be supported at work. So it's actually a very helpful exercise because you know what the person would need. So it's a nice discussion, round table, or maybe a um, brown bag discussion or over lunch discussion with your team. So you can use it So inject an appreciation activity once a week for the team. Come up with new implementation using the concept of appreciation. Be appreciative of how hard work and efforts of my teammate. Self-appreciation, yes. So, mga affirmations. Sabi nila, for every, uh, for every one critical feedback daw na nare-receive ng mga tao na na-hurt sila, it would take five positive, it would take five affirmations para ma-offset yung hurt that people would get from um, getting criticized. May ganong, may ganong ratio. So from Mom Christine, right after this webinar, I'm definitely giving out the appreciation quiz to all my team members. Okay. So at this point, remember the two employee, the two colleagues that you listed down earlier when we started the how. So please list down now um, what uh, what kind in what way will you appreciate those two people in the coming weeks. So you can use the um, appreciation bingo card that we had earlier to get ideas on how to extend appreciation to them. All right. So, and with that, so, and with that, I turn you over to um, Nikki for our one moment. Okay, so before before I turn you over to Nikki, so just a final final word. So um, some people said earlier na parang oh, appreciation is not that important naman or parang it's so awkward to give. But I think yung big goal natin dito, why we're trying to learn the language of appreciation is really, um, it's so according to Paul White, who's one of the proponents of this one. So it's not just about making people feel good. So hindi lang siya touchy-feely. It's actually about building healthy relationships and people working better together at work. That's why we want to build this culture of appreciation at work. Okay, and with that, I would turn you over. Thanks, Ross. I just really want to say that um, I'll follow your star. <laughs> I'll follow the star. <laughs> so that's my takeaway. So the situation is a lot of people have been saying because of the pandemic, because of working remotely, I feel so much I feel less appreciated at work. So that's the situation mm -hmm. that we're hearing all around us. And so mm -hmm. that was, yeah. that's the situation. And then the task, what we wanted to do in positive workplaces is to make sure that people still appreciate each other. And then she and Ross have really designed a great, well, a, a, a very reflective session that helps us know how we can appreciate others more and really elicits a lot of action from us. And I can see that the result here is people have a lot of takeaways from this session and they know exactly what they're going to do next after this to make people feel more appreciated. So Ross and Chi, thank you so much for doing that. And for everyone here listening, you can actually contact us for in-house trainings. So our trainings are always like this. They're activity-based. They're learner-centric. We talk about so many local examples and local insights. And it's output-oriented. It always drives you to do a productive thing that makes your workplace uh, better and happier. So if you want to contact us for in-house trainings, please just reach out to learn at positiveworkplaces.org. Or if you're part of a company and you think that your HR should do this, you can even send us your HR's contact and then we can take it from there. So that's what we hope you would do. And some of our courses that are coming up soon is we have the Emotional Intelligence Leadership course where Kay Valderion is actually going to tell us more about how we can be uh, leaders who lead with that empathy, with that emotional intelligence and how that really benefits the workplace. Another training that we have is because we hear from a lot of people that the trainings and positive workplaces are actually fun. It's engaging. It's something that I look forward to, even if I'm not assigned to do it. 
we're teaching you the secrets of how we're able to create learnings like this. What are the key what are the key ingredients that we have for every training that we conduct? So if you want to go behind the scenes into how we design positive training experiences, join us for that session and you'll be soon creating your own sessions like this. And lastly, we're creating, we have an event. It's called the Positive Young Leaders of the Philippines. And what we want to do is highlight youth stories that inspire positive leadership. So many youth are uh, becoming positive leaders and they're making so much impact. They're rippling out that positivity into the world. And we want to recognize those stories. So we will be asking people to apply and share those stories or nominate someone that they think is a positive leader. The application starts on March 1st. So watch out for that on our Facebook page. So now, um, please, we invite you to ask questions uh, while Ross and she are here. They've, um, I know Ross has been talking about um, languages of appreciation to so many other contexts before. So she'll definitely be able to answer a lot of questions about specific experiences. And she as well has read so much and researched so much on this. So if you have questions, now is the perfect time to ask. I recognize that we're we're receiving a lot of uh, words of affirmation in the chat box right now. Yeah. So thank you everyone for, for being so appreciative of what we created for you in this during this afternoon. I saw I, the, guess, I remember earlier, Nikki, that um in terms of how much they felt appreciated at work, we had a 5.5 average earlier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Diba? So which is actually a little, a little low, I think. Um and I think one one thing that I'd like to share pala was, um, so they say that now in the virtual workplaces that we don't see each other and we have less informal spaces to bond and appreciate each other, mas kailangan daw natin mag-double time. That's so true. It's it's less organic now because we're not right. seeing each other. The tap on the back, it's so natural um, when we're with each other. But then now that it's less natural, less organic, then we just have to double the intentionality so that we move from a 5.5 to hopefully a 10 in our workplaces. Yes. Yeah, so some comments in the chat box. Lots of people are saying thank you. Thank you so much. And Lillian said she's happy to be here. Last time she was here was in 2020. So if you wish your colleagues were here to hear what we said, you can actually refer us to your HR. Maybe we can come up with something so that it's not just you you have a lot of allies because it's your whole workplace who's doing it. So definitely uh, reach out to us if this interests you. And I guess I have one question um, while we're waiting if anyone else has questions. Oh, okay, here. Here are some questions from Joseph. Um, in what ways can appreciation become counterproductive or unhealthy? How then can the problem be addressed, especially when first Appreciation becomes a form of unhealthy validation that potentially leads employees to crave for it more and that it becomes trivialized. And second, relatedly, the same validation-seeking behavior becomes a way for employees to use them for personal gain. Sometimes people are plastic. So what can you say about this, Ross and Chi? Ooh, <laughs> I feel like my hugot, si sir. You have anything to, to share, Chi? I think for me... Um, again, you have to look back at the ingredients for effective appreciation because usually that's going to happen if it's not authentic. So you have to, you shouldn't show appreciation just because you know, oh, I'm going to do this because um, it's going to increase employee engagement. You have to do it because you actually feel that this person deserves the appreciation. And then I think, um, I think that's also why there's problems with um, sometimes recognition programs. Sometimes there's a feeling that's not genuine because with programs like that, usually it's only tangible gifts that get hit because you give certificates or coupons. But so that's why it's important to also know um, where's the where's the line, where does the line get drawn? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's important to know that it's authentic and it's personal. It's specific to the person, and it really has to come from you. It's not because you're being forced to do it. So yeah, do you have anything else to add, Ross? Right. So I guess um so another additional thing for that. So 
what she mentioned would address the part of like it becoming trivialized. So when it's not authentic, personal, and relevant. So siguro in addition to that, maybe I was wondering if yung unhealthy validation, does that mean kasi hindi na sila nabibigyan ng feedback? Would that be um, yun yung naisip ko when I was reading the question? So pwede naman na hand in hand na you have like a culture of appreciation, you have many different ways on how to provide positive feedback and other forms of affirmation. But of course, it does not, um, it does not mean naman na the other ways of providing constructive feedback, the systems like yung mga performance feedback, um, mga coaching conversations na critical coaching conversations is also there side by side. So parang we use both of them to be able to um, help our employees both in the work that they do and at the same time to grow in their profession and also feel valued by the organization. So parang there's a balance of everything. So hindi din naman natin gusto na um, when people are not performing tapos yeah, appreciate that and so that would be not genuine and at the same time we would like to be able to address those things too so parang there's a balance of appreciation and all the other um checks na nasa systems na natin yes thank you for that answer ross and chi we have another question here what if i'm always appreciating other people but others don't appreciate me it's not fair Go ahead, Chi. Okay. Um, so, as long as it's not, like, you shouldn't stop yourself from showing appreciation even if you don't feel it. Um, I think, because if it's something you feel genuinely, then there's nothing wrong with stopping yourself. But then, as for those who don't show you appreciation, maybe it's also good that you're able to communicate with them. So, this webinar is like a first step. So, you have a way to tell them, like, hey, I learned from this webinar na showing appreciation really increases motivation because it really it really doesn't feel fair sometimes that you keep giving and giving appreciation but don't get anything back. So it's really good to communicate because you never know that maybe there's a reason why they're not showing appreciation. Maybe like with the obstacles we mentioned earlier, maybe it's because they feel busy. So maybe you can all have like a meeting to talk about tips. So yeah, that's what I suggest. How about you, Ross? Right. So if this is, for example, with a boss, so sometimes, you know, parang our boss is not omni omniscient, so they can't see everything. So it could be that um, if, if you're, if you feel prepared for it, if it's something that um, you think you can do, like in a one on one conversation, maybe you could share that na parang boss, parang Ko po na, um, so I, I wanted to seek feedback sana in the work that I'm doing. So kung nahihiya kang sabihin, i-appreciate mo naman ako. So it could be like that. So I wanted to receive feedback on how I'm doing. So what are the things that you think I'm doing well already? What are the things that you think I can have improvement, improve more pa? Para you can hear um, what are the things that you're already doing well. So that's one thing that you can actually proactively seek it for yourself kasi nga baka hindi din nila alam na ganun pala yung feel natin. So, um, and especially ngayong pandemic na ang hirap, ang hirap makapagbasa ng, uh, ng, ng context clues or makiramdam. So it's helpful for us to reach out. And then the other thing is that I think um, it's also important that we learn to be the first person to appreciate ourselves. So self-love then goes hand in hand with it. So communicating to others what appreciation we would like to receive and then also communicating it to ourselves. So so I hope na you're able also to acknowledge for yourself what you've been doing well uh, for Adria. Pwede mo rin silang panoorin ng, ano, ng, Facebook, <laughs> ng Facebook recording ito after that i-forward mo sa kanila. Maybe they would um, have ideas. Yes, those are wonderful answers. Thank you, Adrian. I, I thank you for that question, Adrian. I hope that helps. And it looks like there are no more questions right now. Any closing words from you, Ross and Chi? Oh, you want to go first, Ross? <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, so um, so for me, it's just a cheer on on everyone. So I hope um, the learnings that we shared with you today helps you to better appreciate 
yourselves and seek appreciation for yourselves because it's not wrong. Um, it's actually very healthy um, when done in a healthy way and at the same time um, helps you show more appreciation to your workmate. So use the bingo card in the next few weeks. So hopefully you'll have fun also while doing it. Yeah, so for me, I just want to say like after this webinar, I hope you're all you'll all feel more you'll all be more intentional about showing appreciation to your coworkers because you know it actually means a lot to them and for the entire company. And with the languages of appreciation, you also get to see how there are so many options to show appreciation. So you can choose one out of five, and then each of them have so Ross gave so many ways to do each of when, each of them. So yeah. I'm also super happy that I was able to help out with Ross in this webinar. So I hope you all learned a lot today. So thank you so much for coming and we hope to see you also in our next webinars. Yes, and thank I just want Chi. to thank everyone as well, like all of our participants who are here. They're always so generous with their, with their kind words. So we will be sending an evaluation link in the chat box and if you, um, if you want to tell us what we can improve or give us ideas about what more you want to learn or even just leave us some comments there. We really love hearing it. I think that's where we feel the most words of affirmation. But of course, every time we have these sessions with you, we're super grateful for your quality time. I know everyone's busy so that to be here with everyone is really filling up our hearts because we know you're sharing your quality time. You're giving us your full attention right now. So we're so grateful, everyone. We're pasting the evaluation link in the chat box and you can answer this to get your certificate. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.